Some experiments were never meant to leave the lab. Behind locked doors, scientists have tested the limits of the human mind, and not all of them ended well. From hallucinations that never stopped, to psychological scars that never healed. These are the mind experiments researchers wish they could take back. You're about to hear real stories that sound more like horror movies than science. Let's dive into the most disturbing mental experiments scientists came to regret. Imagine volunteering for a simple psychology experiment, and then walking out barely able to function. In the 1950s, researchers at McGill University here in Canada paid students to lie alone in a soundproof, pitch black room for extended periods. No clocks, no sound, no movement. What started as a study on sensory deprivation quickly spiraled. Volunteers began hallucinating vividly, seeing dogs, fire, and floating objects. Some became panicked, disoriented, or even paranoid. After only a few days, nearly every participant begged to leave. One later said, quote, I started to feel like I was disappearing. The experiment was so psychologically damaging that McGill halted it, but not before the CIA took notes for their own purposes. What if you pretended to be insane just to see if doctors could tell? In 1973, psychologist David Rosenhan and seven volunteers feigned auditory hallucinations to get admitted to psychiatric hospitals. Once inside, they acted completely normal. The shocking part? none of the hospital staff realized that they were faking. They were diagnosed with schizophrenia and kept locked up for weeks. One volunteer noted that, quote, no one ever looked at us as people. Rosenhan's findings shattered public trust in psychiatric institutions, and after the experiment, hospitals became more cautious, but the psychological world never fully recovered from the embarrassment. Would you electrocute a stranger just because someone told you to? In 1961, Yale psychologist Stanley Milgram wanted to find out. Volunteers were told they were participating in a learning experiment. They were instructed to deliver electric shocks to another person, who was secretly an actor, every time they gave a wrong answer. The shocks weren't real, but the participants didn't know that. As the shocks supposedly increased, the actor began screaming and begging to stop, yet most people kept pressing the button. Why? because the authority figure told them to. Milgram was shocked, no pun intended, by how easily people could be manipulated into cruelty. While the study revealed something terrifying about obedience, it also left many participants traumatized. I mean, fair enough. What happens when your senses are taken away, but you're fully awake? This psychological torture method, sometimes replicated in controlled research, involves placing a person in a completely white room. White walls, white clothes, white food, no noise, no color, no variation. While it's not always part of formal experiments, similar setups have been simulated in psychological studies to explore sensory control and breakdown. Subjects often report losing track of time, experiencing hallucinations, and in some cases, disassociating completely. Researchers who tested the concept on themselves described it as, quote, mental suffocation, and many admitted it was something they'd never willingly repeat. Can losing sleep actually drive you insane? Or even worse? In the 1950s, Russian researchers allegedly conducted an experiment where political prisoners were kept awake for 15 days using a stimulant gas. At first, the subjects appeared normal chatting and joking, but as the days went on, things took a dark turn. They began whispering to themselves, talking to unseen entities, and eventually screaming for hours. By the end, one subject had reportedly torn apart his own flesh, while another was found lifeless. The story, known as the Russian sleep experiment, is controversial part urban legend, part rooted in actual Cold War psychological testing. Even if the details are exaggerated, real sleep deprivation studies from the same era showed terrifying results. Paranoia, hallucinations, and in extreme cases, death. What if watching violence actually teaches violence? In the 1960s, psychologist Albert Bandura set up a now-famous experiment. Young people watched an adult beat up an inflatable clown doll. 
punching it, kicking it, even sometimes using weapons. When the kids were later left alone with the doll, they mimicked the exact same behaviors. The takeaway? Children don't just observe violence, they would replicate it. Bandura's work shaped how we think about media and aggression, but even he expressed concern that the experiment may have introduced violent behavior to people who otherwise wouldn't have shown it. The unsettling part? Modern studies suggest similar patterns with violent video games and real-world aggression. This one is as brutal as it sounds. In the 1970s, psychologist Harry Harlow, famous for his work on maternal bonding in monkeys, wanted to study depression. So he created a device he literally called the Pit of Despair, a small, dark isolation chamber. Baby monkeys were placed inside for weeks with no social contact. The result? Severe emotional trauma, self-harm, and in many cases, irreversible psychological damage. Harlow admitted the experiment was intentionally cruel. He wanted to mimic the hopelessness of human depression, but critics say it crossed a line into pure torment. Even today, the study sparks fierce ethical debates, and it's one that science has never really justified. What if you could make enemies from nothing? In 1954, psychologists took two groups of boys to a summer camp without telling them that it was an experiment. The boys were separated into two groups and subtly encouraged to compete. Soon, they were insulting each other, vandalizing property, and even engaging in physical fights. The researchers had sparked a full-blown war. But then, they did something else. They introduced challenges that required both groups to cooperate. Slowly, the boys reconciled. The study showed how easy it is to manipulate people into conflict and how hard that is to understand. Undo. But many people criticized the deception involved in the emotional harm done, some of whom reportedly left the camp distraught. What if you could transmit thoughts into someone else's mind without ever speaking a word? In the 1970s, researchers tried to test telepathy under controlled conditions using what's known as the Gansfeld technique. One person sat in a room with ping pong balls over their eyes, red light shining, and white noise playing. Meanwhile, a second person was shown an image and asked to send it mentally. The receiver described what they saw in their mind. Some trials showed above chance success, sparking decades of controversy. Critics say it's flawed science, but believers point to results that remain unexplained to this day. Even the original researchers backed away from the experiment, unsure if they'd uncovered real psychic ability or if they just tapped into coincidence. I don't know, I want to see what it's like with two people who don't know each other, two people who are like maybe in a relationship, and then twins. Twins got something crazy going on. I don't know. There's just that twin bond. I feel like twins can read each other's mind and they're just not telling the rest of us. This is not a conspiracy theory. It is actually in declassified files. In the 1950s and 60s, the CIA launched Project MKUltra, a top secret operation to test mind control, brainwashing, and interrogation methods. Unwitting citizens were dosed with an illicit substance without their consent. In one case, a man named Frank Olson was dosed and began having severe psychological distress and then died under suspicious circumstances days later. The CIA claimed it was self-inflicted. The experiments were done in hospitals, universities, even brothels, anywhere agents could manipulate people under the radar. When it finally came to light in the 1970s, the public was of course outraged. To this day, many documents remain missing, and even the scientists involved later admitted they never fully understood what they were playing with. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.